What's going on guys? John Lauder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to register users for our e-commerce website with Django and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to register users for e-commerce website. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we added logging in and logging out. In this video, we want to set up registration. Now, up until now, we've had a super user, the admin of the website, which is just us. Now we want to open this up and allow anybody to register. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce website series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Anytime we create any kind of web page in Django, you know it's a three-step process. We create a URL, a view, and an HTML template file. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And let's head over to urls.py. And I'm just going to copy this top one here, come down here and paste it in. And we want to point this to register. And we want this to be views.register underscore user. Keeping with the same theme here, login user, logout user, register user. And we want to name this register. Go ahead and save that. So that's our URL. Next, we need a template. So let's right click on our templates directory and create new file and then go file save as and let's call this register.html. And let's open up our Sarah about page. And let's just copy this whole thing. Or you know what, let's, let's pick up the login page and just copy everything from there into there. And up at the top here, instead of it saying login, let's just say register. And here, let's say register for, I don't know, a user account, something like that. We scroll down here, we don't need all this form stuff. Well, we need some of it, we'll just keep this in here. We'll get rid of the stuff in between, we're going to do this form a little bit different than other forms we've done up until now. So let's go ahead and save this. That looks good. Now let's head over to reviews.py file. This is the third thing we need, we need a view. So let's come down here and define register underscore user. And as always, we want to pass in a request. And then I'm just going to grab any of these lines here, paste it in, but instead of login.html, of course, it's going to point to register.html. Okay, and that's good for now. Let's go ahead and save this. Now let's quickly add a link to the nav bar so we can easily navigate to this thing. So let's go to our nav bar. And let's scroll down. And we want this only to show up if a user is not logged in. So if they are logged in, we're showing a logout link. If they aren't logged in, we're showing this login link. So I'm just going to copy this whole login link again. And inside this else statement, I'm going to paste it in. And instead of it saying login, of course, we want it to say register. Go and we want this to point to our register URL. Okay, let's go ahead and save this head back over to the website, make sure our server is running. And we have this now register link. If we click it, it goes to this page. There's nothing in there yet. All right, so far so good. Now we need to actually set up a form and do all the things to create this registration system. Now, luckily, Django, just like the login logout thing, has all the things we need, and uh, we'll just use that. So let's head over to reviews.py file, and we need to import a couple of things up at the top here. So let's see, we need from django.contrib dot auth dot models, we want to import the user model. And remember, this user is the thing we're trying to create, we're trying to register a new user. And Django handles that model stuff that database stuff itself with the authenticate system, login, log out all that good stuff we looked at in the last video. So all right, we we've got that. And we also need to let's say from Django dot contrib uh, dot auth dot forms, we want to import the user creation form and you'll never guess what that does. <laughs> it creates a user. And while we're at it for good measures, let's go from Django, we want to import forms. Now we don't have forms yet. So uh, we're gonna have to create that. So let's come up here to let's see, our store, right click and create new file and go file save as and let's go forms.py. While we're here, let's go back to our views.py file and let's grab all of this stuff we just created, copy it over to our forms.py file. We probably don't need it in both places, but eh, for good measure, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Now, we need to create an actual form that allows our user to register. 
In the last video, we created a form on the web page. We're not going to do that in this video. We're going to create a separate form because it's going to hook into the registration user and it's just better this way, a lot easier. But there's a lot of code to write here and I sometimes I write it, but most of the times I just copy and paste it. So that's what we're going to do here just to speed things along a little bit. Go to github.com forward slash flat planet. And this is my GitHub account. No, I don't think the world is flat. I just find it hilarious. Some people do. Click on repositories and type in Musker. I did a Twitter clone app series a while back that has all the same code. So we're just going to use that. Click on this Musker and then click on this Musker directory. And we want to come down to our forms.py file. And here it is. And we need the sign up form. So here it is. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. So make sure you get it all. And you can right click and copy or control C to copy. And let's just head back over to our sublime text and just paste it all in. And we'll go over this here. Now make sure these things are tabbed correctly. And this is not a space. You know, I just use the space bar and you can see there's little dots in sublime. You don't want that you want this to be tabbed over and you can see those dots are gone. So make sure everything is sort of lined up correctly. Here we've got this sign up form. That's the form we're going to use. And we're inheriting this user creation form, which we imported up here. And of course, the user creation form is just a part of the Django authentication system that creates users with a form, right? And so this is going to have email, first name, last name. It's also going to have a username and a password one and a password two. How come two passwords? Well, think about any time you ever register, they always ask for the password twice to make sure you typed it correctly. So the first one is password one, the second one is password two. Kind of makes sense. Uh, username, password. Now, why are these things separate from these things? When we look at this code, you'll see we're basically doing the same thing in this block as we are here, but we need to do it this way so that we can use bootstrap styling on our forms. And these fields are a little bit different than these fields, right? We don't really need these fields. We don't really need an email address. We don't really need a first name. We don't really need a last name in order to register a user, but you absolutely have to have a username and a password or else you can't have a user, right? Those things you just have to have. So these two things are sort of always separate. And you could just leave this off completely if you want. And you don't have to have an email, first name, last name. In fact, our current user doesn't have those things. And if we go back to the website here and we go to the admin section, we're gonna have to log in real quick here. When we do, if we click on users and we see the admin, you can see there's an email address, first name, last name field. But in this case, we don't have those things because we never added them. We could have, and we could do it right here if we want to, but we don't have to, but we do have to have a username and a password. So that's sort of the distinction. Let me log out here, head back over to the website. So, all right, let's look at this code here. Let's see what all this is. So first email, we've got forms. And from here, from Django, we've imported forms, forms.email field. This is going to be an email field. There's no label. And the widget on the screen is going to be a forms.text input field. And the widget on the screen is going to be a forms.text input. That's just a Django categorization. And inside of here, we've got adders. And this is the bootstrap styling. Anytime you have a form with bootstrap, it uses a form control. And here's the placeholder. We looked at all this stuff in the last video. We just did it on the web page. Now we're doing it behind the scenes. But it's the same thing, class form control, placeholder. Uh, and same thing with the first name and last name. It's a text input field. It has a form control. That's a bootstrap thing. And we've given it a placeholder of first name, last name. So that's good. And here we have this class meta. We always have to do this. We have to designate what model we're using. We're using the user model. And again, we imported that up here at the top of the screen. And here you just designate your fields, right? Username, first name, last name, email address, password one, and password two, right? We just have to designate those out. And then down here again, this is just more code doing basically the same stuff as, as up here. Uh, you'll see again, we have a class of form control right here. We have a placeholder username. We have no label, just like up here, we have no label. And then here is where it's a little bit different. Here we have some help text and we'll see what this stuff is in a little bit. This is just gonna be a little text underneath this thing that says, you know, hey, this is required 150 characters or fewer letters, digits, you know, it has all those things and it's put and it's gonna make it small text, right? Same thing down here with the password, right? We got to give this a little bit of text here. We're going to say, hey, your password can't be a 
uh, to some of your other personal information, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff gets passed in. And that's just what all that is. This code signup form is referencing what we call this class. And that's pretty much it. So we've got this form all defined here on the back end in our forms.py file. Go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and close it. And we'll use that more in just a second. But for now, let's head back over to our views.py file and let's write out the code that allows us to use all this stuff. So before we do that, we need to come back up to the top here. And we've got this line from django.contrim.off.forms. We're importing our user creation form. We also need to go from dot forms and this dot forms, that's our forms.py file we just created. It's not showing up here. Let me go to project refresh folder. Okay, and there it is right there. Uh, but we need to reference that at the top of our views.py file. So let's go from forms. We want to import that sign up form we just created. So that sign up form there is the same as this sign up form here, right? So we're just basically saying, hey, take it from forms.py and allow us to use it in our views.py. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's come down here and actually set this up. So in our register underscore user function, let's define our form. And this is just gonna be that sign up form that we just created and imported. And now let's say, hey, are they filling out the form or are they going to the web page? If they're filling out the form, let's test for that. So let's go if request dot method equals host. And remember, when you fill out a form, you're posting that form to the back end. So here we're saying, hey, are they posting that form? If so, let's do some stuff. So uh, let's go form equals, remember our sign up form, but we want to pass in now the request dot post. And this is just all the stuff they typed into the form. We're saying, hey, take all the stuff on the web page that they typed into that form and put it into our sign up form. And then we're gonna do stuff with it in a second here. So let's now check to see if this is valid. So did they, you know, add a username? Did they fill out all the things we need them to fill out? So let's go if form dot is underscore valid, then let's go form dot save. We just wanna save that information. So now let's, take that information and log them in, right? So let's go username equals, and this is gonna be form.cleaned.underscore data. And we wanna pass in our username. And let's just copy all of this stuff again, but instead of username, now this is gonna be password. And then we wanna clean from the form that they typed out, password one. We don't really care about password two. It'll do the stuff validation on its own. We just now need to get the password so that we can log them in, right? Here, let's log in user. And to do that, we create a user and then we wanna call this authenticate function that we've imported at the top of the screen. And we wanna set the username to username, which is what we just defined right here. And we wanna set the password to password, which is what we just defined right there. Pretty simple. Now let's log in our user. So let's go log in and then we always wanna pass our request and then that user that we just defined. So for now, we can add a little message here if we want. Let me just copy this guy and paste it. And instead of saying you've been logged out, let's say uh, you have registered successfully. Welcome, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. After that, let's return, redirect, and let's send them back to the homepage. Now we need an else statement. And let's bop this over. So if they've posted, filled out the form, do all this stuff. If not else, just show them the page. Now inside of here, we have this if form is valid, right? We also need an else statement for that. So let's give a little message and let's say, whoops, <laughs> there was a problem. Registering, please try again, dot, dot, dot. And instead of redirecting them home, let's redirect them back to the register page. That looks good. Everything seems to be in order there. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, the only thing left to do is add this form to our register page. So let's head back over to our register page. We copied and pasted a bunch of stuff. Here's the form method equals post. We don't want this to point to login. We want to point it to register. And we definitely still need our CSRF token. And now for the actual form itself, we can just use this form tag. Let's go form dot as underscore P. And then underneath here, we need a line break or maybe two. And then we need a button. So let's just go button. And it's gonna be a type of submit. 
it's a submit button. And let's give it a class of BTN space BTN dash secondary. And this will make it a gray bootstrap button. And here, let's have the button say register. And then we just close that tag. So go ahead and save this. Now this form gets passed to the web page, but we didn't actually pass it to the web page yet. So we need to head back over to our views.py file. And down here, we need to pass that in. And you'll notice up here is that form. So we can just add it here in our context dictionary as form colon form. So all right, that looks good. That should work. Let's head back over to the website and hit reload. And boom, here we go. We've got a username, first name, last name, email address, password. And we've got these little things, your password can't be too similar. And they're all sort of centered. And maybe we like that. Maybe we don't. That's because on our register page, we added this, let's see, this stuff right here. And then we centered it. I'm going to take that out and see what see what it looks like. It's not going to be centered, but maybe that's okay. We can center it if we want. Uh, let's head back over here. Instead of this being a call dash eight, let's change this to call dash MD dash six. And let's give it an offset of dash MD dash three. It might work. This is just bootstrap stuff. We might have to get rid of this row in this container, but oh, let's see what this does. All right, that's a little better. Bops it over into the middle, scrunches it up a little bit. And you can see this required 150 characters and these things that comes straight from our forms.py file. So if we head back over here to our forms.py file, that is all of this stuff like here, like this last help.txt or dot help underscore text thing. And this one here and this one here, that's where all of that stuff is, right? So you can compare that if you want, uh, but we're just taking my word for it. And so here we go. So let's create a username. I'm going to create this as John. My first name is John. My last name is Elder. Uh, let's go John at codemy.com and let's give it a password and let's give it another password and let's click register. Boom, you have registered successfully. Now there's a log out thing. If we click it, it that seems to work. Uh, let's try and log back in as John. Yep, that seems to work. Let's log back out. Now let's go to the admin section just to see if this is all working. Let's log in as admin and click on users. And sure enough, there's John looking good. Now John is not an admin user or a staff user. So you can see there's a little X there. Admin is, and we are coming right along. So let me log out here and head back over here and take one more look at this. And again, if we log in as say admin, that register link disappears and we're good to go. So there's lots of line breaks here. Maybe we'll take those out or maybe we'll just leave them, whatever, uh, but just that easy. So that's user registration. We're gonna wanna work on this a little bit more in the future because right now it just has first name, last name, email address, and our customers have other things like their addresses, their actual addresses, maybe their phone numbers, maybe whatever. So we can add things to this and we'll look at that in future videos. But for now, we are moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.